What's up leaders? It's your girl Andy. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. All things Holy Spirit. Okay, what it is, how you know that you have it, how to hear it, um, when to identify, you know, what is the Holy Spirit, what is not the Holy Spirit, and most importantly, how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I know that can be a very confusing topic. It was always hard for me to explain to others whenever I knew something came from the Holy Spirit, but you just kind of know, and we're going to get into how you know in this video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is what is the Holy Spirit? And it's actually really funny that I'm making this video because I had tried to record a video about something totally different on Monday, and it was kind of me like ranting in a way about a certain topic that I like um, and my flash drive completely went corrupt. I don't know how that happened. That's never happened to me before um, but I I can only imagine that God had a little something to do with it because it wasn't the video he wanted for his channel, okay? Andy and Jesus, I know my name is first but Jesus really is the coordinator of what's going on here. And so yesterday I, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm really going to make a video. I sat down and nothing was coming out. I have a list of video topics and literally nothing was just working for me. And then today I was spending time with God. I was really getting into it. I needed God today a lot um, this morning. So I was spending time with him and he was talking to me and boom, this entire video came to me via the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so I think it's just really funny that we get to talk about this. If you saw my last video, I talked about how to know your calling and somebody DM'd me about that video and said like, I really liked your video, but I'm still confused about how to let the Holy Spirit lead me and what that means. And I have heard other people use this example and I'm like, wow, that's how, how do they know? How did they get such a clear message from the Holy Spirit about something so big or so crazy? And I've been practicing like praying before everything because that's a big thing. Like if you pray before everything, then, you know, God has can have power in it, you know, before you make a decision. So I've been practicing that, but even still, it's not that black and white, but I do get very clear messages from the Holy Spirit. So I was actually able to answer some of my own questions in the past couple weeks about how to really no, especially because now I'm doing things for God bigger and and more than I ever have done before. So it's really important that I'm doing it with God. Um, and so he was able to, to show me how we can do things together and how he's going to lead me. And that is, you know, via the Holy Spirit. So without further ado, let's just start diving into this topic. Okay, so what is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? So as we know, there is one God of the universe, right? And he manifests in three different ways. So it is, So there's the Trinity, right? And the Trinity is really one, one person, one being, whatever, one God, the God. Um, but it manifests in different ways. You know, God comes to us differently. So we have God who rules the whole universe. He makes the trees grow, the wind blow, you know, all that good stuff. And then we have Jesus who was God in the flesh. You know, when God needed to come and talk to us and tell us, you know, face to face, like what is up, what he's really wanting for us, and then to actually sacrifice himself for our sins so that we don't have to pay for it. Um, that is Jesus, okay, who is very much God. And then Jesus says that, you know, the one that comes after me is better than me. That is the Holy Spirit. That is God inside of us. So it really makes sense if you think about the Trinity. That's not what this video is about, but I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit is God inside of us. So like how many times do you ever think, or maybe it's just me, but I'm like, I wish I could just have Jesus sit right in front of me and we could talk face to face and he could give me a hug. Like, you know, and God is spirit, right? The Bible says God is spirit. So there's God, there's Jesus, there's the Holy Spirit. They're all one, but God, the God form is completely spirit. So the completely spirit God can't really give me a hug in that way. Like I can't see him face to face and get a hug from him, but Jesus could, right? Um, but you know, Jesus isn't here right now. He's doing his other things, but the Holy Spirit is here with us and it is for all of us. Like even Jesus, like God came down as a person, but he was still just one person. So it's like he couldn't be with all of us at one time. But with the Holy Spirit, he gets to be with all of us at one time. It is him inside of us. It is his little voice inside of our hearts. Um, so that's what the Holy Spirit is. For me personally, all of my experiences with the Holy Spirit have been a feeling, a knowing, an intuition. And God's word 
revealing itself to me inside of me. It's literally God inside of you. So you, you have to understand whenever you're born again, you receive the Holy Spirit, which is God that dwells inside of you. So like think you have your spirit, you have your feelings, your emotions, your flesh, and then you have God's spirit inside of you as well. But God's spirit really comes inside of you and it becomes you. You know, we become a new creation when we are born again. So it's not only is it God, but it's also a part of you. So a lot of times it feels like an intuition. It feels just like a knowing that came in. It, it feels just like you. Sometimes you can't even um, discern in the moment what is from you and what is from the Holy Spirit. Um, I've noticed that a lot of times when I look back, that's when I could really see that that was the Holy Spirit. So there are some times where it's literally like me and the Holy Spirit are sitting right with each other. Um, and that's, it's hard, it's a hard phenomenon to explain. Um, but a lot of times I'll, I'll look back and I'll be like, oh, that was definitely the Holy Spirit that led me through that situation. So it's not as black and white, I think, as sometimes it may come off as seeing, but, but you do know it. And as a Christian, I, I'm sure you have experience where you just know that that was something surreal. It was a little supernatural. It came from somewhere. It's, it's a type of energy that comes from somewhere and you don't, you can't quite claim it as your own doing. Because this feeling and sensation is so hard to actually explain, I'm just gonna give you some examples and maybe it'll help you put into perspective or I really just want this video for you to be able to relate to me and my experience and it might help you with you and your experience and to know that that is God leading you and shepherding you, especially if you're kind of like new into tuning into that. So I was on Instagram the other day and I saw this really cool, like it was an ad in the story feature and it was just so cool and I wish I would have saved it so I can credit the person, but they were talking about, you know, if you text your boyfriend every single day, you and your boyfriend, you text all day, every day you know you've been dating for months this is who you are and then let's say somebody steals your boyfriend's phone and then they start texting you off of that phone would you know that it's not your boyfriend texting you yes you would because you know who your boyfriend is you know what your boyfriend's personality is you know how your boyfriend talks and how he speaks to you so if a random stranger picks up your phone and starts texting you these things that your boyfriend would not say it's not in his character then you would know you'd probably know right away, right? Because even though you can't hear his voice, you can't see his face, you know who he is. And so a lot of times that's exactly how the Holy Spirit is. It's these thoughts that we have all the time and these feelings and these revelations that we have inside of us that are coming from God. And we know that because we know who God is. So um, if, you're, if you feel like you're being led by the Holy Spirit or you're getting told something, ask yourself, is this God's character? Is this who God is? If I have a strong feeling inside of myself or I have a strong revelation about an idea or whatever, something that I'm doing, and it aligns with God's word and it's something that I was praying about, then it is most likely God talking to us, the Holy Spirit talking to us. So if you're having confusion, look to identify if it is God, if it's actually the character of God when you're receiving these messages. You know, the Holy Spirit is never gonna tell you, oh, you're ugly, you should probably get a nose job or, oh, this person's only gonna love you if you make a certain amount of money or, you know, something crazy like that, that's not gonna come from God because that's not who God is. God's gonna tell you things like you are perfectly, wonderfully, fearfully made, okay? I made you the way you are for a reason. Love isn't something you have to buy. Love is a free gift. It is the way of life. You know, those are things that you're gonna hear from God, not the other. So you'll kind of be able to discern in that way. I had went on a trip to Miami and in my head, I've always wanted to go to Miami, Florida. I always imagined myself being Andy Miami, like that girl on the beach, <laughs> living my best life. And so when I went out there, I was around people and these people were Christian entrepreneurs, okay? And that's what I, you know, identify as. So they were like giving their spiels about their products and the stuff that they do and they would incorporate God. And I'm like, wow, this is what I've always wanted to learn. And it was very insightful for me. And I basically had an opportunity to make money in Miami. I made all these friends in Miami. Like everything seemed like it was lining up perfectly and I was like oh this is definitely God this is God working in my life um, and I was like I went outside and I literally like kind of had a little bit of a moment I was like overwhelmed I was like wow God like I can't believe you're opening doors right in front of my eyes like this is exactly what I asked for and then I got home and as soon as I got home the Holy Spirit the actual Holy Spirit told me 
you can do these things but it is not the purpose I have for you and you know the purpose I have for you and it's like in the moment I didn't realize in the moment I thought it was God I thought it was God leading me I thought you know this is what I prayed for but the second I got home it was like look <laughs> God was like in my face like now you have to turn and it's not like I heard it in my head it wasn't like there was a voice that said hey you can do this but this isn't the purpose I had in mind for you no it's not like I heard an audible voice it's just that I knew what my purpose was and I was sitting there and I was praying with God and he he was like this is your purpose Miami does not have your purpose in it okay maybe someday sure but today no so you need to not like I just knew that I needed to not think to think about that or worry about that or even try to do that right now because that wasn't where my purpose was okay and and I just knew where my purpose was so it's I hope that example kind of helps you a little bit I wanted to bring that up because I watch Pastor Michael Todd with Transformation Church on YouTube. I love his YouTube videos, absolutely. And he mentions a lot of times how he got a job opportunity in a field that he was working on and it was like the best opportunity that anyone his age could have gotten. You know, it was it could have been like a godsend, that's how good it was. But he said God told him, he prayed about it and God told him, no, this is not for you. If you do this, you will be successful, but I will take my hand off of you. The, the special purpose and anointing I had for you is gone and when he first said that I was like how like how can you hear such a crazy strong message from God I like I just I dream I pray for that you know I was like how can that work and then it actually happened to me you know God kind of revealed the same thing to me and it's if you go and watch my video about your calling you'll understand like that's how I knew because I had I had been able to identify my calling and where my calling wanted me to go and and so I knew, you know, that that actually wasn't it. And I knew these things via the Holy Spirit. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for God working inside me, I wouldn't understand any of these things. I wouldn't understand why God wants me to do what he wants me to do. So another example of just how I personally connect with the Holy Spirit is sometimes I literally talk out loud. <laughs> and I know that sounds kind of crazy. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm weird. Okay, but do you ever have conversations with yourself? I've done this before. And it's kind of almost like daydreaming. Like when I was younger and I used to do it, I used to always imagine that like I was on a talk show and I got to, you know, give my spiel. And, and so I'd kind of just have like these imaginary conversations in my head. And it really opened me up to a fantastic dialogue with the Holy Spirit. Like I know one time I was just laying right there and I was like facing my cross and I was just looking up at my cross and just letting my mind wander as if I was like having this pretend conversation and it just kept unfolding and unfolding and I laid there for literally like probably almost two hours just thinking and thinking and thinking I was just having revelation after revelation after revelation and it's like how like why like how and why does that even work um, a very specific example is I was going to a specific church and this church was telling me about the Holy Spirit and this is such a flex okay um, God really showed out for me in this way and I'm so grateful and just I feel so loved because of this experience but I went to a church that was telling me you know if you can't prove that you have the Holy Spirit by speaking in tongues then you don't actually have it you aren't actually saved you're not actually good enough for God basically is what they were saying right and that really got to me because I was like so on fire for God at that at that point in my life you know I am still now but I was just getting back into my relationship with God and so it was so hard for me to hear that like I literally would cry and I would feel that way because when someone tells you that God is not actually with you that's like ripping out my soul you know what I mean like God is the only thing that I can rely and depend on so I remember there was a day because they were saying the same thing to my friend and for me I was a little more mature because I got saved in high school but my friend was new to being saved and so they were telling that to him as well and it was just it was hurting me so bad to see him go through this that's why I started going to that church really was to um, be with him in this moment because I knew what they were saying to him but when they were saying it to me too as strong as I thought I was it was still so hard to digest and to actually hear like and to see people that run a church and to tell you stuff like that it's it's hard like that's intense so there came that faithful day when we were gonna have a showdown just me and my friend and the two leaders of the church and me and my friend we were getting all these like verses stacked up against us to make our case because we knew they were gonna make their case you know what I mean and we really it wasn't like we were trying to fight with them but we wanted to talk to them and I personally I was like okay God you sent me to this church because you wanted me to help them see that you know that's not really the way and that God loves everybody and you know what I mean? So I'm like thinking this is my moment, God's putting me in the ring, like I am a lawyer for Jesus Christ in this moment. 
um, and I just remember when I was sitting down I was like writing down like all these different verses and why you know I was making my case that I did have the Holy Spirit even though I couldn't prove it in talking in tongues the way they do and I just remember I didn't even have my Bible with me at the time I had already like pre like googled all the verses that I needed and I we had already done that Bible study portion of it right so I just had those and I was just kind of like writing out my points and I sat there for two hours writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and I just like I filled it page after page as to why God loved me and and how it worked out and it's like in that moment I, I had gotten so off track by the end of that message I had pretty much digested the whole Bible and why I was saved you know and what being saved meant and I just kept going and going and going and God revealed some words to me that I had never used before or had seen about these people before but he told me that you know they had the spirit of Pharisee because they were very much about acts instead of you know grace um, and and just like all those all these things started popping up in my head and I'm like how is this possible and then I just remember like at the end I put my pen down and I was like wow if that isn't the Holy Spirit then I do not know what is because like maybe the first couple paragraphs that I wrote out was me making plausible arguments but after a while it was just me going on and on and on about every it was God through me like just and it, it was really like he was talking to me and he was comforting me in that moment because the more I just sat there and kept thinking about like does God love me am I saved do I really have the Holy Spirit he was comforting me and telling me all these things about how he loved me and how the Holy Spirit works so that is just a really good example, I would say. The Holy Spirit is God's living word inside of you. So like I said, I was just sitting there and spending this moment with God. You know, I had to do this with God and he just kept sh giving me more examples and his word literally was coming alive inside of me and coming out to me. And that's something that I think is really beautiful about the Holy Spirit and that I've, you know, learned firsthand is that I have not read the Bible back and forth. I haven't even read half of the Bible. I'm just going to be completely honest. Um, but I do read it sometimes. I pick it up and I read like random parts. I don't know why, but I always kind of read just randomly the Bible. And I personally spend most of my time listening to sermons or listening to like, you know, Bible scholars. And then I go and like, like into the Bible and stuff. That's just how I've always been. That's my relationship with God and that's okay because I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. So anything I need to know that is in that book right there is inside of me as well. Even if I haven't read it before, I know it. I might not know it word for word. I might not be able to tell you what book and what chapter and what verse, but the principles of the Bible and of God's way of living and God's will are inside of me. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. Whenever you go to do something that goes against God will, God's will, you're going to feel it, okay? And that's the beauty of being a new Christian or, you know, born again is that you don't become a perfect person. You don't know everything. You're not, you know, this perfect Christian disciple to God but you know now and whenever you go to do things that go against him he's gonna stop you it's really a beautiful thing how the holy spirit works and you just have to trust it okay and we're gonna get to that i'm gonna wrap this video up real soon but really quickly the i want to go over the fruits of the spirit which are love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self and self-control and i really want to point out the last one which is self-control self-control is a fruit of the spirit okay it's not something that we do and whenever i first heard that it was re it really hit me home okay because self-control is hard it's hard for us because we are flesh you know and the flesh is very sinful the flesh likes carnal things it likes what it likes that's just how it is even if we are a new creation okay but the holy spirit the fruit of the Holy Spirit is self-control. And we learn that self-control because inside of us, we know better. The flesh, the body, it wants what it wants. You know, it wants to eat cake. It wants to sleep all day. Um, but the inside of us, our mind, our spirit, our hearts, it tells us what to do that's actually good for us. And that's especially true when you have the Holy Spirit. So you go to do something that you're not supposed to do. And guess what? It's going to tell you, okay? And then because you love God, because you felt that love, and because you know the Holy Spirit loves you, and it's there to protect you, not to tell you, to give you a bunch of rules, then you are going to turn away okay you're, you're gonna deny yourself of the things that you that you wanted to do not all the time you know we're not perfect um, definitely we need 
a lot of grace because there's a lot of things that we do that the Holy Spirit probably warns us not to do, but you know, a lot of times it will help us as well. So I really could go on and on, but I'm just gonna close right here. How does one get the Holy Spirit? You get the Holy Spirit as a free gift when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Um, and there, there's a bunch of verses like that, but there's one in specific in Acts that says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit. So that is it, okay? That is it. And the Holy Spirit is a free gift. It's not something you deserve. It's not something that you earn. It's not something that you have to prove, okay? Um, it is a free gift to all of you who come to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And how do you know that you have received the Holy Spirit and that you do have it now that you came to Jesus Christ for as your Lord and Savior? You know because it is written. And whatever is written in the Word of God is the Word of God. So period. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't ever have the Holy Spirit with you. And don't doubt it yourself. A lot of times our own doubts about God's word or God leading us is what keeps us from really fulfilling what we should be doing. You know, if we can just look to the word of God and believe it word for word, at, no matter how crazy and unconventional it sounds, um, that's how we that's how we really truly unlock the blessings of God and have that true relationship with God is just believing his word like there is nothing else in this world to believe, okay? Um, so you just got to fully believe that it is written. You do have the Holy Spirit with you. If you're watching this video, I'm, I'm, it's pro you probably have given your life to Christ before. Um, so you do have the Holy Spirit and you just got to trust it and you got to ask God to, to reveal it to you, you know? Um, God freely gives wisdom, generously. Ask for that wisdom, ask for discernment, um, and you got it, okay? So don't worry about it. I hope this video really helped you. I hope these examples kind of helped you maybe discover the multiple ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to you in your life too that you might not have noticed before, um, but just know God is always there, okay? 24 seven, all day long, he is in here shaking things up inside of me so i'm sure that he's doing the exact same thing for you thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you next time bye